very sweet song, glorifying Srimati Radharani, written by Rupa Goswami. Um, it's very, very famous song. We sing it all the time in ISKCON for Radhashtami. <clears throat> so I just thought we'll sing this song. The translation for the song is, O Radha, O beloved of Madhava, O you who are worshipped by all the young girls of Gokul, all glory is unto you, all glory is unto you. You who dress yourself in such a way as to increase Lord Damodar's love and attachment for you. O Queen of Vrindavan, which is the pleasure grove of Lord Hari. O new moon that has risen from the ocean of King Vrishabhanu. O friend of Lalita. O you who make Vishakha loyal to you due to your wonderful qualities of friendliness, kindness and faithfulness to Krishna. O you who are filled with compassion. O you whose divine characteristics are described by the great sages, Sanaka and Sanatan. O Radha, please be merciful unto me. So Rupa Goswami has written this glorifying uh, Srimati Radharani. So I request everyone to, everyone's on mute and we're all joining from, I think, different cities. But nonetheless, we'll all sing together. And uh, I request everyone to sing as loudly as you can so that everyone in your house can listen to your singing and calling out to Radharani. So let's get started. <coughs> Radhe Jaya Jaya Madhava Daite Radhe Jaya Jaya Madhava Daite Radhe Jaya Jaya Madhava Daite Gokula Taruni Mandala Mahite Gokula Taruni Mandala Mahite Radhe Jaya Jaya Madhava Daite Radhe Jaya Jaya Madhava Daite Damodar Rati Vardhana Veshe Damodar Rati Vardhana Veshe Hari Nishkuta Vrind Hari Nishkuta Vrind Davi Pineshe Hari Nishkuta Vrind Davi Pineshe Radhe Jaya Jaya Madhav Daite Radhe Jaya Jaya Madhav Daite Vrishabhanu Dadhi Navashashi Lekhe Vrishabhanu Dadhi Navashashi Lekhe Lalita Sakhi Guna Lalita 
सकी गुण ललिता सखी गुण रमित विषाखे ललिता सखी गुण रमित विषाखे राधे जय जय माधव दे राधे जय जय माधव दे करुणाम कुरो मई करुणा भरीते करुणाम कुरो मई करुणाम कुरो मई करुणा भरीते सन कसना तना सन कसना तना वर्णित चरीते सन कसना तना वर्णित चरीते राधे जय जय माधव दे राधे जय जय माधव दे गोकुल तारुणी मंडल महीते राधे जय जय माधव दे राधे जय जय माधव दे जय राधा माधव राधा माधव राधे जय राधा माधव राधा माधव राधे जय प्रभु पद प्रभु पद प्रभु पद जय प्रभु पद गुरुदेव 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 नीता गौर हरि बो हरि बो हरि बो गो हरि बो गौर प्रेमानंदे हरि 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 बो शिल रूप गोस्वामी पाद की जाए श्रीमती राधा रानी की जाए अनंत कोटि गौर भक्त वृंद की जाए जय निताय गौर प्रेमानंदे हरि हरि बोल ओम अज्ञान तिमिरांध से ज्ञानांजन शलाकया चक्षुर उन्मीलित तस्म श्री गुरव नम श्री चैतन्य मनोभीष्टम स्थापित ये नूतले स्वयं रूप कदा मह्यम ददाती स्वदाक जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासदी गौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे नमा विष्णुपादा कृष्णपृष्ठा बहुतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी नमने नमस्ते सरस्वते देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चातेशतारिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासादि गौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे आनंद लीलामय विग्रहाय हेमाबिव्य छवि सुंदराय तस्म महाप्रेम रस प्रदाय चैतन्य चंद्राय नमो नमस्ते श्री चैतन्य चंद्राय नमो नमस्ते श्री चैतन्य चंद्राय नमो नमस्ते सो हरे कृष्णा वेलकम एवरीवन 
I really want to thank the temple and the organizers of this call on behalf who on behalf of Iskon Scarborough very affectionately invited me for this service this morning and I really am very grateful and very thankful for this opportunity to everyone on the call joining from different parts of the world my prostrate obeisances vancha kalpatru bhyascha kripa sindhu bhya evacha patitanam pavanibhyo vaishnavibhyo namo namaha <clears throat> so today we will be discussing on this topic the art of surrender <clears throat> just give me a minute let me just make some i think the mic is little yeah hari krishna so um the topic that we will going we'll we'll be discussing today is the art of surrender it's actually a very broad topic there can be many sub topics to this like the art of surrender to shri guru the art of surrender to the holy name the art of surrender to deity worship the art of surrender to the vaishnav community the art of surrender to the holy abode of vrindavan dham the art of surrender of our false ego there could be different streams of discussion as far as the topic of uh, art of surrender is concerned but i want to take a specific line of thought today on the art of surrender shila prabhupad's appearance day was celebrated a day after janmashtami that was just few days ago and in this month we are celebrating um the glorious presence of shrimad bhagavatam in our life in the form of the bhadra purnima campaign so i want to dive in today's discussion on the art of surrender very specifically to shrimad bhagavatam so the topic will be surrendering studying and taking the best use of the opportunity that is available that is the availability of shrimad bhagavatam this is a very important topic because most of us have shrimad bhagavatam sets in our home and we may have even sometimes read the shrimad bhagavatam we may have even gone out on distribution of shrimad bhagavatam sets but then still this topic is important because maybe we are not consistent we are not constantly engaged in studying shrimad bhagavatam memorizing shrimad bhagavatam the art of surrendering our time to shrimad bhagavatam the art of surrendering our energy to shrimad bhagavatam the art of surrendering our faith and enthusiastic endeavor in the study in the reading studying preaching of shrimad bhagavatam this is what the topic will be today i will try to speak for about uh, 30 to 45 minutes and then we will take some questions um i will i will be very happy to take more questions today because there are a lot of practical <clears throat> questions regarding study of shrimad bhagavatam that many times devotees have expressed in many classes of other speakers and even personally to me uh, a few boys have written in the past about uh, shrimad bhagavatam so i will just speak for about 45 minutes or so till the clock strikes 12 here which is 40 minutes from now uh and then i would like to hear from all of you either your reflections from the class or in general your sharing your thoughts that you share in this topic or any questions that you think we can discuss for for the benefit of everyone my spiritual master right from his childhood have been uh, has been a very wonderful example of motivation and inspiration in this regard for those who observed and for those like me who did not observe but heard about this uh, wonderful phenomenon as far as the art of surrender to shrimad bhagavatam exemplified by shila guru maharaj in his life right from childhood his attachment to shrimad bhagavatam was something that was um unnoticed by many but at the same time noticed by the the fortunate ones 
because Srila Guru Maharaj comes from the village um, of Bihar, state of Bihar, from, from his village. He's not a city boy. He grew up in the village. So many, because at that time the families are big families. They are not small families like these days. There's father and then three brothers and four sisters, etc. Every family typically in the village of India is like that. So in his home there were many members and even in the neighboring house and in the villages, in, in the village that they lived in, many houses, so many people. So many did not notice, but there were people who noticed. So there are many things which went unnoticed, but many things did not go unnoticed. And one of the things that didn't go unnoticed was his dedication and attraction to Srimad Bhagavatam right from childhood. Srila Guru Maharaj used to go outside his house on the banks of a holy river in, in the neighborhood. And from 5 o'clock in the morning to about 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, mid-morning, for about 6, 7, 8 hours every morning, he would be seated. He would be sitting on the banks of the river in that village and just studying Srimad Bhagavatam in solitude, in seclusion, just alone sitting and reading Srimad Bhagavatam. So much so that he never told anyone where he is going. His mother one day chastised him that, where are you going? Every morning you leave the house and you're not there till mid-morning. Are you in bad company? Are you in bad association? Whom are you meeting? Who are your friends? And what do you do? So Srila Guru Maharaj at that time he mentioned, well, I go to read Srimad Bhagavatam. <laughs> mother said, Srimad Bhagavatam? That seems to be like a very good excuse. With whom are you reading Srimad Bhagavatam? So he said, I read Srimad Bhagavatam all by myself all by myself. So then the mother said, uh, then why go to the, to the river, the banks of a river? Why not study at home? So Srila Guru Maharaj said, there are so many people at home. Constantly there's some walking, constantly there's some talking, constantly there's some singing, and so many things happening. So I will not be able to study and focus. So I wanted to go in a place free from uh, intervention, free from disturbance, free from... Uh, people, <laughs> the influence of people. So I just want to be alone on the banks of a holy river under the shade of a tree and Srimad Bhagavatam and myself and just be absorbed. So the mother said, okay, you can do that. There's nothing wrong. Continue doing that. But my only thing is, why are you empty stomach? Why are you empty stomach? You don't eat or drink anything from morning. Um... You go there on the banks of the river, as you were mentioning, with your Srimad Bhagavatam in your hand. Um, and by the time you come back, it's 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, even 1 o'clock in the afternoon sometimes, and you haven't had anything all morning. So my advice would be, why don't you drink something, have your breakfast, and then go? So Srila Guru Maharaj said, no, actually I am doing a vrat, which means I'm, I'm following a specific regulative or regulated schedule. I'm following a, a proper schedule. What's the schedule? Ask the mother. So Srila Guru Maharaj said, my discipline is, or my promise to the Supreme Lord, my oath is, till the time I don't finish a certain section of reading, I will not drink water or eat even one grain. I want to do it on empty stomach. Because when you don't have a discipline like that, some days you read Srimad Bhagavatam and some days you don't. But if you connect the reading of Srimad Bhagavatam to the hunger in the belly, because you have to eat every day, then naturally the, the connection is, without reading, I will not eat. And because I have to eat every day, that will ensure that I will read every day. So the mother said, then why is it taking seven hours for you to read? What are you reading? <laughs> for us to read Srimad Bhagavatam for 30 minutes a day. Although Srila Prabhupada recommended two to three hours every day, scrutinizingly, Prabhupada did not say read, he said study. He said, I want all my students to study Srimad Bhagavatam two to three hours every day, scrutinizingly, which means to scrutinize from different angles of vision. So the mother asked Srila Guru Maharaj, why is it taking six, seven hours for you? <laughs> what are you reading so much? So Srila Guru Maharaj said, my daily reading is reading one whole canto every day. This is my vrat. 
my daily um, meditation or my daily vrat, my daily promise to the Supreme Lord is to read one whole canto every day. Srila Guru, so Srila Guru Maharaj's mother said, but that shouldn't take seven hours. Reading one canto, you can finish faster, is it not? So Srila Guru Maharaj said, apart from that, there is one more added vrat. It's not just one canto of Srimad Bhagavatam to be read. Apart from that, there's there's a you know a subdivision to that promise. So main thing is to read one canto, but the sub promise, the sub oath, is apart from reading one canto a day, I will also memorize, which we call as by heart in some places, hmm? by heart or memorize one whole chapter a day. So I'll I'll reiterate, recapitulate the point. Srila Guru Maharaj told his mother, one whole canto of reading and one whole chapter memorized. All the Sanskrit verses in that chapter memorized. Just think about it. Let, let this just sink in. Breathe in heavy and deep and let this thought sink in. Think about reading a canto of Srimad Bhagavatam every day which means you finish Srimad Bhagavatam in 12 days, one canto a day. But apart from that, it is one chapter a day of memorization. How long does it take for us to memorize one verse? Let's just sincerely ask ourselves. To memorize one verse, how long does it take? And then how long does it take to memorize two verses and three and four and five and all of them are not in the same melody and the same meter? Bhagavatam sometimes has smaller verses and a little longer and then a little longer also. So to memorize all of them of memory, apart from reading one canto a day, is uh, quite an extensive expression of surrender to Srimad Bhagavatam. So for example, let's say if this you know second canto of Srimad Bhagavatam has 10 chapters. So reading the second canto, whole second canto, and then memorizing chapter 1. And next day, reading again whole second canto and memorizing chapter 2. And third day, reading the whole second canto and memorizing chapter 3. And in 10 days, memorizing 10 chapters of the second canto, apart from reading the second canto 10 times in 10 days. So this has been um, quite, you know, quite a phenomenal expression of surrender to the Srimad Bhagavatam. Srila Gaur Govinda Maharaj is another example. Very, 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 very um, exemplary art of surrender displayed by Srila Gaur Govinda Maharaj as far as Srimad Bhagavatam is concerned. Srila Gaur Govinda Maharaj used to wake up two hours before <laughs> Mangalarati. So let's say the Mangalarati is at 4 o'clock or 4.30 he would wake up by 2, 2.30 in the morning. And two hours before Mangalarti, he used to study Srimad Bhagavatam. This is so amazing. So amazing. Two hours before Mangalarti studying Srimad Bhagavatam, which means when you are at Mangalarati, you are not sleepy. You are seeing Krishna through the eyes that you have received by studying Bhagavatam for two hours. Let's say the Bhagavatam, that the section that we are reading, Let's say it's the pastime of Krishna and Balaram entering the forest of Vrindavan. After reading that for two hours in Brahma Muhurta, just before Mangalarti, now you come and take Darshan of Krishna Balaram, Gornitai Krishna Balaram and Radha Sham Sundar in Vrindavan. Imagine the affection with which one, the reader of the Srimad Bhagavatam will be glancing at the deities. And what to speak of Srila Gaur Govinda Maharaj? He was a... He was a monument. <laughs> a self-realized, lion-like Acharya. Very tall structure in the Gaudiya Parampara. Very authoritative structure. He would read Srimad Bhagavatam. And it is, disguised, it is described that Srila Gaur Govinda Maharaj uh, used to get headaches if he didn't get a chance to share Srimad Bhagavatam through Harikatha in a day. Let's say if there's no class he would have headaches 
and he would tell his servant, please get some devotees, I want to do a katha on Bhagavatam. And only after he shares and speaks for about three, four hours, only then his headache would be uh, gone. So the headache was not the headache because of some bodily pain, it was the pain of the heart. That what I am reading and what I am studying, I am not getting a chance to share and sing the glories of Srimad Bhagavatam. So when he would get opportunities, then he would explode. Srila Gorgovind Maharaj, when he gave classes, his classes, Srimad Bhagavatam classes, used to be typically three, four hours long. At eight o'clock he would start and he would do bhajans for about 30, 40 minutes <laughs> in the start of the class, till about, let's say, 8, 30, 8, 40. And then after that, he would start offering Mangalacharana prayers, which would go for about 20 minutes. He would have so many prayers to chant. And then for about 30, 40 minutes, he would glorify Srimad Bhagavatam. So let's say 8 o'clock he starts, 8 to 8, 30, 8, 45, only bhajans. Gaudiya bhajans, Bengali bhajans, Odia bhajans, Sanskrit prayers, Bhaktivinoda Thakur, Narottam Das Thakur. He's just singing 30, 40 minutes. And then after that, uh, Mangala Charan for about 15, 20 minutes. So many prayers. In fact, there was a book that was published of the Mangala Charana invocation prayers chanted by Srila Gaur Govinda Maharaj before a Bhagavatam class. A book. That's how many prayers he chanted. Not just, you know, like two or three <laughs> verses in the Mangala Charan like we chant. He, he had a whole collection of his own. This is how he was. Excellent. And then at 9 o'clock he would start glorifying Srimad Bhagavatam. We'll go for about 30 minutes on the glories of Srimad Bhagavatam. Then after that at 9.30 he would start reading the verse, the translation, the purport. And he would speak for about one and a half hours or two hours till 11, 11.30. And each line of the purport of Srila Prabhupada, he could open it up and discuss for about 10 minutes. Let's say Prabhupada says one line, Srila Gaur Govinda Maharaj would jump into that purport, take that line out, and again and again and again, you know, almost hammer and nail the conclusions of that one line into the heart of the listener. To the heart of the listener. His Holiness Radhanath Swami Maharaj glorified Srila Gaur Govinda Maharaj last year by saying that Srila Gaur Govinda Maharaj saw in the purports hidden jewels that in general people couldn't see. Something that when you and I, we are reading, we will just overlook. But Srila Gaur Govinda Maharaj's study pattern of the Srimad Bhagavatam used to be such that he would take one purport and he would rip it line by line and every line he would discuss. Every line of Srila Prabhupada. And then of course, in the middle, he would support that with the songs of Bhaktivinoda Thakur, songs of Narottam Das Thakur, such a great Acharya. Every line of Prabhupada, he would bring it out from the purport, he would bring it out and show that this is how valuable this line is. So he would speak for about one hour, one and a half hours, two hours. And then after that, the questions and answers will begin. In the temple room, and then even after Srila Gorgovin Maharaj, rises from the Vyasasan, starts walking down the stairs of the Iskon Bhubaneshwar temple towards his room. There used to be questions and answers even on the stairs as he's stepping down on his cane. Even now on YouTube they're called as the Royal Staircase Conversations. The Royal Staircase Conversations. So on the staircase, the Royal Staircase, there used to be conversations. Uh, questions asked by disciples, answers by Srila Gaur Govinda Maharaj. So in this way, about four hours every morning, <laughs> he surrendered to Srimad Bhagavatam. Bhagavatam is the pran, is life. Srimad Bhagavatam Puranam, Puranam Amalam Yad Vaishnavanam Priyam. Yad Vaishnavanam Priyam. Srimad Bhagavatam is the scripture of the Vaishnavas. Which means if we call ourselves a Vaishnava, we should see if Bhagavatam is dear to us. Have we surrendered our time, our energy, our studious intellect, our writing ability in taking notes? Our, have we uh, strained our memory muscles enough? Work out of the memory muscles enough in memorizing the verses of Srimad Bhagavatam. Just like if you, if you don't exercise for the body, the muscles become weak for the body. There's no exercise. 
if you don't hit the gym and or even at home if you don't um take the dumbbells and start working out the body will become weak similarly the same goes with uh, memory muscles if we don't strain them if we don't give a workout for them by remembering the past times remembering the flow of the events remembering the lessons of the bhagavatam remembering the sanskrit verses remembering the take home uh, points from the bhakti vedanta purports if we don't do that then the memory will get weaker and then instead of remembering the right things from the bhagavatam we will remember the wrong things of this world first he did this to me then this happened then she spoke like this then he did like this these are all examples of using the memory good memory in the wrong thing in this wrong direction instead we should use the memory that krishna has given us sarvam sri krishna arpanam astu back to krishna just like you take water from the the ganga and you offer it back to ganga so we take the memory muscles from krishna the seeing ability from krishna the reading ability from krishna the cognitive um retaining ability grasping ability retaining retaining ability reproducing ability of information we have taken it from krishna why not use it back to for his service in the bhagavatam and only then can we share it with everyone these verses can act as wonderful tools wonderful weapons in the war front against misconceptions and illusion if people are talking about speculation you will have verses coming in your heart about what bhagavatam talks about speculation if someone's discussing leaders in society then your heart will flood with verses from the 12th canto which talks about how leaders in kali yuga will be so even if there's a twist in the discussion with politics or or anything of this world let's say trees or the heat or rain shower or full moon or breeze or peacocks whatever may be the context that we see or we hear about the heart which has surrendered to shrimad bhagavatam will pull verses from shrimad bhagavatam past times from shrimad bhagavatam take home lessons from shrimad bhagavatam principles expressed in the shrimad bhagavatam to see the world around not seeing the world through the window of our eyes but seeing the world through the inspiration given by shrimad bhagavatam very important his holiness tamal krishna maharaj also used to wake up early in the morning and study shrimad bhagavatam one hour and how 30 minutes he used to recap things that he has studied in the past and 30 minutes he used to study fresh new and what he studies today 30 minutes and today and yesterday and day before yesterday that he will recap tomorrow 30 minutes but then 30 minutes again studying new and in that also <clears throat> he would study not just the scripture but also memorize the older verses that he has memorized before and now start memorizing newer verses so recap the previously memorized verses and fresh memorization of newer verses so you see that uh, his holiness tamal krishna maharaj used to quote nicely leading as an example showing us how leaders and preachers and teachers and um devotees in general how they should be surrendered to shrimad bhagavatam is very um very important very important lesson shila prabhupada when shila prabhupada was coming to america he was asked swami maharaj i we heard that you are going to america and prabhupada said no that's not true i am not going to america shrimad bhagavatam for the first time has agreed to leave eastern soil to go to the west shrimad bhagavatam has decided has agreed to go to the west shrimad bhagavatam is going to america but every great soul goes with servants around so i am going as a servant to shrimad bhagavatam shrimad bhagavatam is going to america and i am going just as a servant in the shastra it has been described bhakti devi tells narad muni idam sthanam parityajya videsham gamyate maya that this land of vrindavan i will give up and videsham gamyate maya i will make a overseas western tour <laughs> videsham i'll go to a foreign tour 
Bhakti Devi tells Narad Muni. This is found in the Shastra, in the Puranas. So Prabhupada used to, in, in line of this verse, say that Bhakti has decided. Bhakti in the Srimad Bhagavatam has decided to go to America. And I am simply going as a servant. This was Prabhupada's mode of surrender to Srimad Bhagavatam. How sitting at Radha Damodar temple he studied the commentaries of our Acharyas, compiled all of that and gave his ecstatic Bhakti Vedanta purports. How wonderful. How wonderful. Even to Captain Pandya, the captain of the Jaladuta, Srila Prabhupada gifted his first copy of Srimad Bhagavatam. Prabhupada loved Srimad Bhagavatam so much. When someone asked about Prabhupada's success, Prabhupada said, No, I am simply a medium with the instruction of my Guru Maharaj on top of my head, with the messages of Srimad Bhagavatam in my heart, and with the holy name on my tongue, I have come into this world, you know, the Western world, to preach. So I am not the one who is worthy of the credit. It's the instruction of my Guru Maharaj, the messages of Srimad Bhagavatam and the empowerment of the holy name on the tongue. So much so that Srila Prabhupada in his song also, the song that he wrote, he includes Shrunvatam, Swakatha, Krishna, Punya, Shravana, Kirtana, verses from Srimad Bhagavatam included in the song of Srila Prabhupada. So that anyone who reads the song of Srila Prabhupada will end up reading those verses of Srimad Bhagavatam. This is very important. Studying Srimad Bhagavatam is very important. Sometimes someone may say that, um, you know, I don't want to be a scholar. I don't want to be a jnani. I don't want to be a pandit. I want to just have bhav for Krishna. Isn't the process of bhakti about bhav? Why should we become a pandit? Well, the answer is we are not attempting to be pandit. If the purpose of reading Srimad Bhagavatam is to show the world how much we know, or to be considered as a Pandit or to become famous to get some name and fame or to speak Srimad Bhagavatam and make money in, in return if any of these intentions are there then Srimad Bhagavatam although we may be memorizing we may be studying we may be even quoting the conclusions of Srimad Bhagavatam we will find it very difficult to follow in life we will be quoting Yes, we should do this, we should do that. But then there will be a big gap between our personal conduct and what we are preaching. Because Srimad Bhagavatam is not opening himself and giving his mercy. Because we are not approaching him, him meaning Srimad Bhagavatam, for the ultimate benefit. The ultimate benefit of studying Srimad Bhagavatam is Na utpadayet yadiratim shrama evahi kevalam Studying Srimad Bhagavatam has only one purpose. That is to please Krishna. To know more about Krishna, to please Srila Prabhupada. Prabhupada said, if you want to please me, distribute my books. And distribute my books means distributing the copies and distributing the contents through preaching. And to preach, we ourselves have to know. So Prabhupada sacrificed his night's sleep to give these books. Can't I sacrifice the day time that I have to study the books that Prabhupada wrote at night? You see, if we are told to write something at 1 o'clock at night, we ourselves will not be able to read our own handwriting in the morning. Because in the middle of the night with sleep, we will write something, scribble something. Next morning, we ourselves will be shocked. What did I write? But Srila Prabhupada, even at 1 o'clock at night, wrote with so much precision and so much alertness and so much spiritual empowerment that what to speak of daytime, the words of Srila Prabhupada's purports are such that anyone in darkness in this world will be pulled out by reading his books. And I am saying this out of practical experience, really practical experience. How much I have gained and how much I continue to gain from Srimad Bhagavatam, Prabhupada's presentation of Bhagavad Gita and Bhagavatam and Chaitanya Charitamrita. I will not be able to express and explain that in words. And I am sure most devotees here also have the same experience. Those who read, they will never be cheated in the material realm. Param Pujipad Mahavishnu Goswami Maharaj from Rajkot used to say that one should get married to Srimad Bhagavatam. <laughs> Think about it. He used to say one should get married to Srimad Bhagavatam. Just like we say 
oh, she's my wife. And the wife says, this is my husband. And they say, these are my children, or this is my father, mother, etc. Similarly, Srimad Bhagavatam should be our spouse. Like we should be bound um, in a loving relationship with Srimad Bhagavatam. That daily I will read, daily I will hear, daily I will take notes, daily I will memorize, uh, daily I will share whatever I am reading and hearing. These five things we all should do. Hearing Srimad Bhagavatam from great souls, our own personal study of Srimad Bhagavatam, memorizing Srimad Bhagavatam verses, hmm? sharing that with everyone around, and fifth, trying to have a change in consciousness on the basis of Srimad Bhagavatam. Trying to see this world through the lens of Srimad Bhagavatam. I repeat the five ways to serve Srimad Bhagavatam. Hearing Srimad Bhagavatam from great souls, studying personally our own notes, we take note, our own personal study, that's the second. The third, after study, is to memorize the verses which are very important. Let's say verses which describe the form of Krishna. You can mem memorize them and close your eyes and mentally, spiritually chew them in your mind. And that gives so much juice. See, if we don't put our mind and intelligence if we don't surrender our intelligence and mind at the service of Srimad Bhagavatam, then Maya will use our intelligence and our mind and mental faculties in her service. So instead of analyzing the verses of Srimad Bhagavatam, we'll be analyzing the faults of other desires, devotees. We will be analyzing different uh, drawbacks and shortcomings in communities. We will spend time analyzing, justifying, giving reasons, debating, and even criticizing perhaps other souls, when there is so much opportunity to be absorbed in the ocean of bliss, we are busy going down the stinking drain of material contamination. So the only way is to study. So hear Srimad Bhagavatam, study Srimad Bhagavatam, memorize the verses of Srimad Bhagavatam. Now memorizing also, not just the verses glorifying Krishna, you can memorize verses which are instructive, so that we remember them. Or you can memorize verses which will prove a point in our preaching. People oftentimes have misconceptions about so many things in life. And when we speak to them with references from Srimad Bhagavatam, you know, by giving strong quotations and verses from Srimad Bhagavatam, um, th those are like arrows in the quiver of a preacher. Otherwise, what value do our words have if they are bereft or they are devoid? of the conclusions of Srimad Bhagavatam. When we quote the Sanskrit, it brings in so much authenticity. It shows that it's authorized. So memorizing verses and quoting them is very important. You can have notebooks to memorize. You can have flashcards to memorize. I can show you. I have a few here. Uh, maybe not here. It's in, my <laughs> in the other room. Um, nonetheless, maybe in another, in another discussion I will... If, if it's possible, I will show. I have a f few flashcards that I use. Flashcards are small books, small papers you can write. And when you memorize verses, you have five minutes before breakfast prasadam. You can look at them, just repeat two, three times and keep it in your pocket. Five minutes before lunch, again you take it out, look at the, the words in the page, and again close the paper and put it back. Five minutes before dinner prasadam, you can open again, read two, three times, again put it in the pocket. Early morning when you wake up, you're brushing your teeth. It, takes, it should take at least three, four minutes to brush. It shouldn't be shorter than that. Even dentists recommend three minutes at least. So those three minutes, you can keep that paper in front of you and you're looking and you're brushing. Mm, so And just before going off to sleep at night, the last thing that we see are those verses. It could be one verse a day. It could be one verse in two days, or it could be one verse a week. But it's good to start from somewhere. It's good to start from somewhere. There is a book on selected verses that Srila Prabhupada quoted in his classes. And it's phenomenal if you see how blissfully and how, with what ease, like the blowing, gushing, like the blowing wind or the gushing of the river, Srila Prabhupada used to quote verses. Anybody who has heard Srila Prabhupada's classes, 
will be amazed as how many verses Srila Prabhupada quoted. And from all over the place, he was quoting all over Bhagavad Gita, all over Bhagavatam, many Bengali verses from Chaitanya Charitamrit. And Prabhupada even would venture into so many uh, scriptures that are not so, you know, not so easily accessible or not even quoted so regularly, like Chanakya Niti, for example. Or he would quote something from Shvetashvatara Upanishad or Mundaka Upanishad, even the purports. And during Prabhupada's time, no internet, there's no access to Wi-Fi and smartphones and laptops and mobile data and none of these things. Just by sheerly by his study. Sheerly by his study. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Prabhupada had a disciple. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Prabhupada. Apart from Prabhupada, our Prabhupada, he had so many disciples. So one disciple had memorized 18,000 verses of Srimad Bhagavatam on the tip of his tongue. And not in a pompous way to prove that I am a scholar, but just as his adhyayan, just as his study. So much so that when he was given sannyas, he was given the name Bhakti Shri Rup Bhagavad Goswami. Bhagavat was there even in a sannyas name because he had studied Srimad Bhagavatam and memorized so many verses. So in this way, our Sampradaya has been a living example of surrender to Srimad Bhagavatam. Srila Sanatan Goswami did not have a place to stay, but he had all the time and love in the world and in his heart to write commentaries to Srimad Bhagavatam. Same with Srila Jiva Goswami, same with Srila Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur, commenting on every verse of every chapter of every canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. And Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself, Srimad Bhagavatam Purana Mamalam Prema Pumartho Mahan, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Matamidam Tatradharana Paraha. He himself, three hours a day at Tot Gopinath, he would sit and discuss Srimad Bhagavatam with Gadadhar Pandit. That's how much taste. Mahaprabhu is Krishna and Gadadhar Pandit as Radha. Radha and Krishna sitting together and studying Srimad Bhagavatam at Tota Gopinath. This is very important. Very, very important. So this discipline must be there. Otherwise we will not be fixed in Siddhanta. We will not be determined and focused and steadfast in our services. So we should hear Srimad Bhagavatam from great souls, their conclusions. Otherwise, our conclusions could have faults, we could misunderstand. So hearing means we hear from senior Vaishnavas who have studied Bhagavatam. And also we study our own notes. We, we take Srimad Bhagavatam and we have our notebook and we read and write. Gauranga Darshan Prabhu from the Bhaktivedanta Vidya Peet has come up with the Bhagavat Subodhini series. So I recommend all of you you can purchase them also. They are all like study guides. I remember when I was little back in Mumbai, they used to have these study guides for exams, for different courses that we were enrolled in. And those study guides were such that the referencing textbooks were this big. They were big, huge to study, like 600 pages. But these study guide notebooks, they were only like 100 pages. And they had the the, or like 60, 70 pages. And they had the conclusion of the whole 600 pages of the reference textbook. So these study guides by Gauranga Darshan Prabhu are like that. They are very useful for study. Uh, many have gotten benefited by them. So you can purchase and you can read Srimad Bhagavatam and keep the study guide next to you. And also keep a notebook and you can keep writing and studying. So here, have your own study. Ask questions to senior Vaishnavas. I heard this, but I have read this. How do I understand this? Like that, reconciling. And third, we should memorize the verses. Memorize verses, very important. We can even sing them. Let's say you memorize one verse. You memorize the verse as Manmana bhava mad bhaktav madhyaji maam namaskuru maame vaishas yuktvaiva matmana mat parayana. You can take a murdanga, you can do kirtan. Man mana bhava mad bhato madhyaji maam namaskuru maame vaishyasi yuktvaivam atmanam mat parayanaha. So you'll never feel bored. You can sit at home even all alone with a kartal and sing the verses. Krishna becomes so happy.
And apart from that, step four is to share them with everyone. Whatever we are hearing, whatever we are reading, whatever we are studying, whatever we are memorizing, either through preaching or to our parents, to our siblings, or some devotee friends. If devotional communities are based on our surrendering to Srimad Bhagavatam as the central focus and we discuss with each other what we are reading and hearing, then we have no time to discuss anything else. And the fifth thing is to change our vision in this world. Instead of always complaining, blaming, criticizing, finding faults, being uh, morose, being depressed, being agitated, being provoked. Um, instead of hearing seminars through, you know, do this or don't do this. Instead, just give your heart, your tongue, your mind positive replacement. Let us all do that. Instead of giving our time for other things, let us give our time for Srimad Bhagavatam. And anybody who studies Srimad Bhagavatam, they get the benefit of Krishna. Paramananda Pathaya Prema Varshi Aksharayate Sarvada Sarva Sevyaya Shri Krishnaya Namostume. Srila Sanatan Goswami has written verses glorifying Srimad Bhagavatam, where he says that anybody who studies Srimad Bhagavatam, Krishna showers special mercy on them. Special mercy on anyone who studies Srimad Bhagavatam. Isn't that why Srila Prabhupada instituted the 8 o'clock morning class in every temple? So that you can just walk into a temple and hear Srimad Bhagavatam for one hour. One hour every day. Irrespective of the city that we live in. And now it's gotten even more easier with live webcams, with easy download, of audio, live streaming and Facebook or YouTube, SoundCloud, so many places where audio video is uploaded and we can study Srimad Bhagavatam. So it's very important. When we study them, when we re repeat these verses and we chant and study them, then the heart gets cleansed. Think about the prostitute who came to Haridas Thakur. She just heard his chanting for three days. And she gave up being a prostitute and became a devotee chanting the holy name. So the sound vibration is so powerful. When she heard the sound emanated from the lips of Haridas Thakur, of the holy name, which is again the essence of all verses, there was a change of heart. And she became a devotee. So why won't that happen for someone who reads Srimad Bhagavatam and associates with the sound of Srimad Bhagavatam? Dhruva Maharaj. Dhruva Maharaj had material desires in his heart, but just by repeating the mantra, the sacred sound vibration given by his Gurudev, when Vishnu actually manifested, Dhruva said, I have a change of heart. I, I don't want it anymore. I just want the service at your lotus feet. Ajamil, change of destiny just by calling out Narayana at the time of death. So if we practice singing these verses, it's possible at the time of death, some of these verses may come on our tongue and then no more entering another mother's womb. All our books and registers of karmic reactions are all torn and discarded by Chitra Gupta because at the time of death, verses from Srimad Bhagavatam were chanted. Very important. Krishna is always there to protect devotees who call out to him. Gajendra chanted verses. Krishna came. Prahlad Maharaj was always chanting the holy name. Krishna came. Draupadi called out. Govinda Dwaraka Vasin, a verse, and Krishna came. Krishna is bound by Shastra. So if someone studies, hears, memorizes, speaks, shares, and lives life by those principles, why won't Krishna protect such a person? Why won't Krishna nourish such a person? Why won't Krishna be pleased by such a person? In Chaitanya Charitamrit, we see the Brahmana from South India. He was just studying Bhagavad Gita, and he was making mistakes, but still Mahaprabhu embraced and accepted him. Because just of the sincerity, the plain, dedicated sincerity of studying Srimad Bhagavatam. So this is very important. Harishauri Prabhu explains how Prabhupada was a breathing Bhagavatam. Every step that he took was in line with Srimad Bhagavatam. Param Pujapad Mahavishnu Goswami Maharaj used to say that if one lives in the ashram, whether it's Grihastha ashram or Brahmachari ashram, but if one doesn't study Srimad Bhagavatam, the walls of the room will eat up your bhakti. <laughs> Very uh, interesting way of putting the truth. 
whether brahmachari or grihastha if you live between four walls and you don't study shrimad bhagavatam the walls have the power to eat up our bhakti he used to say hmm this is uh, very important if you see in statistics number of people in india who get into first grade education and then you compare how many of them go beyond 12th grade and go into undergrad and grad education all of you will be shocked to know, to know the statistics let's say if 100% enter first grade only 12% cross 12th grade and go to undergrad studies remaining either due to financial crisis this is statistics in india very specifically in maharashtra from you know where i come so if 100 students get into first grade or 100% get into first grade then only 12 students or 12% go beyond the 12th grade and study further because remaining 88 are either swayed away by bad habits or no interest or financial crisis or health crisis only 12% can you imagine only 12% out of 100% go beyond the 12th grade and study ahead why am i saying that in this context because it's even more shocking to see the numbers hmm. it was displayed in the leadership sangha is con leadership sangha what percentage of devotees who start studying shrimad bhagavatam from first canto what percentage of people finished first canto and go to the second canto and the numbers are shocking if 12% students pass 12th grade 100% get into first grade only 12% pass the 12th grade and go beyond if 12% is a shocking number then only 10% of the devotees cross beyond first canto and go into the second canto so shocking if let's say 100 devotees get into the study of first canto shrimad bhagavatam only 10 happen to go to second canto but now because of so many programs bhakti shastri bhakti vaibhav etc there's a revolution in our movement that everybody must study everyone must study we all should be uh, aware of the philosophy otherwise we will be sentimental we will be blind followers so the art of surrendering to krishna is surrendering to shrimad bhagavatam and start and surrendering to shrimad bhagavatam means prioritizing shrimad bhagavatam in our life prioritizing shrimad bhagavatam prabhupad writes in one purport that studying Shrimad Bhagavatam for one hour in Brahma Muhurta. I can share the purport also with everyone. Prabhupada says studying Shrimad Bhagavatam one hour in Brahma Muhurta equals studying Shrimad Bhagavatam five hours during the daytime. I repeat, studying Shrimad Bhagavatam for one hour in Brahma Muhurta early hours of the day equals five hours of Shrimad Bhagavat study during the daytime, during the whole day. so we can wake up early in the morning we can study shrimad bhagavatam we can chant the holy name these are the resolutions we should take and automatically with the coming in of the sun like shrimad bhagavatam the darkness of all our anarthas will go away everything will go away so when we gain inspiration then we can share that either through book distribution or through preaching i remember meeting Uh, his grace vaisheshika prabhu in boston and there was some interaction and i saw one devotee uh, talk to his grace vaisheshika prabhu something about shastra and vaisheshika prabhu immediately pulled out a small diary from his pocket and put on his glasses and he wrote what that devotee was saying and i was amazed Vaisheshika Prabhu should be speaking and we should be taking notes but one devotee someone said something and Prabhu ji was so humble and kind and receptive hungry to to gain more he 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 was carrying a pocket diary and he removed and he wrote that down and he said thank you for this gift i'm going to carry it with me so i felt very inspired that there is no end to when the study stops it continues it continues so with that i will i will uh, pause today 
if there are any questions reflections questions uh, discussions corrections additions please feel free i will also be very happy to hear from all of you um, i hope this helps all of you and helps me also we all can go deeper in the study of shrimad bhagavatam um, this is this is my sincere prayer shila sanatan goswami has said a sadhu sadhuta dain ati nicho chataraka haana munch kadachinmam premna rit kantha yospuraha he said by studying shrimad bhagavatam the advantages are a sadhu sadhuta dain somebody who's a sadhu who doesn't have good qualities he will be blessed with all good qualities and ati niche uchchataraka someone who's very fallen will be lifted ha namunch kadachinma o shrimad bhagavatam even if i forget you you please never forget me sanatan goswami is praying always live in my heart and through my throat please always stay on my tongue grantraj shrimad bhagavatam ki jai gor premanande hari hari bol vancha kalpataru bhyas chakrapa sindhu bhya evacha patitanam pavanebhyo vaishnavibhyo namo namaha Anand Gauranga Prabhu, are you there? Can you hear me? No, I can hear you, Prabhu. I, I, sorry about that. I apologize, Prabhu. So, thank you so much uh, for this wonderful guidance and practical uh, tips that you have uh, given to accelerate uh, the speed of our spiritual engine. And um, you know how you mentioned about uh, not just reading but studying and uh, uh, and 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 uh, the examples that you quoted about uh, you know reading or studying the entire canto and then memorizing a chapter. It is said. Uh, you know you reach uh, aim for the sky and you'll reach the tree top so we need to go beyond where we are today so we are so thankful for this wonderful class and several hands have gone up prabhu so right away um, why don't we take the question so that we can learn from the questions as well as from your uh, wonderful answers so um, we would start off with say prati uh, parima who put uh, put her uh, put the hand up first so if you can uh, unmute yourself parima Okay, so we'll move along to the next person, Gaurav Awana. Actually, Hare Krishna, Hare okay, Krishna. sorry, Parima, go ahead. Sorry, ahead. Prabhuji, I couldn't unmute myself, so I couldn't speak. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji, please accept my humble obeisance. It was very, very inspiring class, and it actually guided me through how I should practice. Prabhuji, um, I had this question that you said that one hour of reading the uh, Bhagavat in the uh, Brahma Murta is equivalent to five hours of reading, which is what Prabhupada says. But Prabhuji, we start by chanting actually in the Brahma Murta. So by the time we get to reading the Bhagavatam, it's not before 6.30 or 7 a.m. So what do you have to say to that? Still a great thing. 6.37 is not bad at all. so we usually i we i start by we I, we have a, we have a group where we start listening by like 7 so it goes on beautiful so, very good that's good first good. priority to 16 rounds of chanting and then everything else okay prabhu ji thank you very much thank but it's so not much. brahma murta do <laughs> we will have to we will have to make plans to wake up maybe an hour earlier <laughs> 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 okay prabhu ji thank you very much thank you, thank you so much for the nice question and a beautiful answer prabhu so can we hear from uh, gaurav awana hare krishna prabhu ji dandavat pranam hare krishna dandavat pranam prabhu i have a question from nectar of devotion uh, there is one offense mentioned in chapter 8 offenses to be avoided that one should not cry before deity so ji can you please elaborate this point because we always hear and read that one should cry before krishna and god <laughs> govind swami maharaj always says one should cry before krishna's deity so um one should cry 
in separation from Krishna and in seclusion. One should cry in the room where there's nobody watching. Nobody should hear, nobody should see. That crying for Krishna, sincere crying for Krishna, that is glorious. That is... Uh, that, that crying for Krishna is glorious and that is recommended. We should feel separation, we should feel worthless that my life is getting wasted. Krishna, please help me. So that crying in seclusion is fine. But when we meet Krishna, we should he is glancing at us, so he should see us happy. He should see us happy. The father will not like to see the son crying. It will concern him. Hmm? So we should, we should uh, give Krishna some pleasure. Also, crying in public in front of the deities could be a very nice publicity stunt to, to, to show everyone I am such a great devotee. So that is again to be avoided. That is an offense. But if one is at the level of spontaneous love where one is seeing Krishna and is weeping and crying and not just during the seeing, the de seeing of the deity, even when one is not taking darshan, even at that time one is feeling separation, then those, uh, that standard is desirable but at the same time it's very exalted but at our practical level yes we should cry but in public uh, in private not in public nobody should see um, the pressure cooker cooks well because the pressure is inside and we can see it right so our life should be like that like a pressure cooker <coughs> bhakti should be cooking in with the pressure of tears in seclusion but when we make a sometimes show, naturally comes tears naturally comes before deity so we should immediately so we should immediately wipe and 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 move out from there or if we stand there then we should not cry okay, because okay, when you. we are in public we should uh, we should um, behave accordingly krishna will never give like a mother will never give four rotis or five chapatis or a mountain of rice to a child who's two years old, right? Because the mother knows this is how much my child can digest and she gives, she feeds the child according to the, the digestion capacity of the child. So if the mother of this world can think like that, how can Krishna give us so much ecstasy that we ourselves cannot handle? Never possible. Krishna will only give us ecstasy as much as we can handle. And we should responsibly and maturely handle the gifts that Krishna has given us. Beautiful, Prabhu. Thank you. Hopefully, Prabhu is okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. So, I'm also going to read out the name as I see in the participant list. So, please forgive me if I'm not pronouncing the name properly or if it's a Mataji versus Prabhu. So, I'm just going to read it as it is. So, let's keep it as a lightning Hare round, Krishna. Prabhu. Question and answers because there are quite a few hands out there. Okay. Uh, Om Varma Prabhu. Om Prakash Prabhu. Om Varma Prabhu. You have a question? Om Varma Prabhu from Toronto. Okay, so we'll move along, uh, Prabhu. Uh, Vishwam Modi. Yes. Okay, Om, Om Varma Prabhu, go ahead. Hare uh, Krishna uh, Prabhu, you have spoken quite well. It's, it's excellent, rather. But I'm an old man, I've got a very bad memory. And my health is not keeping good. So in what way I can chant, I can uh, read Bhagavatam and chant and uh, memorize the shlokas. Don't you know, worry about my, it. Just... My health is not cooperating at all. Yeah, don't worry about it. Absolutely don't be concerned. Don't have any fear. Uh, you just hear Srimad Bhagavatam and constantly chant Hare Krishna Mahamantra. That's all. Chanting constantly is the essence of all Srimad Bhagavatam. All of us on the call, we are taking baby steps. But you have already reached there, so you don't have to worry. Don't, no, no, don't he, beat yourself. There are many great devotees, you know, I'm nothing before them. I'm a very small devotee. So I just want to, to maximize, that is the main thing. So you give me your good wishes, that's all. Correct. So don't worry about memorizing and don't feel morose. Just hear Krishna Katha and chant the holy name. Constantly even, chant. Even, I, even at this time, I'm not feeling well. My heart is chanting. My, Rather feeling very, mm. very much, you know, uh, uncooperative. Don't worry, the tongue must chant. The okay. heart uh, chanting yeah. is uh, a different level altogether. Mm. But you should force your tongue to chant. That we should do. Only my uh, health is not cooperating. That is the main thing. You know, don't worry. 
Don't worry. Mm. However, however bad the health is, mm. we will tell our mind that you can go as bad as you want. But I will not give up the chanting. Haridas okay. Thakur was whipped in 22 marketplaces with blood all over his body, but he continued to chant. So mm. don't worry about it. Even, you know, we are like soldiers. We can lose our hand or lose our leg, but we'll continue to fight. Till the time our head is not chopped off in the war, we don't go, we go handless or legless, we will continue to fight. Only when we go headless, body will drop. So, till the last minute we have to fight, Prabhu. The, the body will say, well, you know, you're not, the mind will say the body is not doing good. But you the tell body me. Is not, the, my, my body is not cooperating at all. Mm, don't worry, that, that your mind is saying. But with your intelligence, tell your mind, your yeah, body will not cooperate. Hmm? But I will make the body chant the holy name. Don't worry okay, about it. Okay. You I don't uh, stress yourself with memorization and reading. You blissfully hear Krishna Katha and you chant the holy name, whether in happiness or in distress. Just do one thing. Keep the holy name on the tongue and never forget that. Okay, never. Just, yeah. I, I just want your blessing, that's all. <laughs> The blessing of our acharyas are there with you if you chant. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much, Prabhu. So Om uh, Varma Prabhu is our 89-year-old uh, young uh, devotee in the Scarborough area. So thank you oh, for your wonderful best. answer, Prabhu. Thank you. So we'll oh, move best. along to uh, Vishwam Modi. Hare Krishna, yes, Prabhuji. Uh, Prabhuji, I am from India. Uh, I'm a school boy in a class 8 standard. I had a question that how can I use uh, Srimad Bhagavatam in enriching my studies? Oh, if you academically study, if you study systematically Srimad Bhagavatam, then studying the textbooks becomes way easier. I am saying that because uh, I had a bad habit of not starting to study my academic textbooks till the last minute. Um, I used to be in my, in my school days known to be a notorious guy who never studied till the last minute I used to keep. And then like one month or two weeks, three weeks before the test, I would be going around taking Xerox, scanned copy of different chapters of the textbook. But by Krishna's mercy, um, the exams used to be uh, pretty simple because I was used to studying Prabhupada's purports. And so if you see in Bhagavatam, it's a little complicated because there is one commentary of Prabhupada and then there's another commentary of Vishwanath Chakravarti, another commentary of Sanatana Goswami. And the Sanskrit words also have different meanings according to context. So if we play the higher game, then the textbook where everything is in English and everything just has one meaning without any multiple commentaries and interpretations and word jugglery there, no poetry, Bhagavatam has poetry, Bhagavatam has stories, Bhagavatam has meters in the verses, but uh, the textbooks have nothing. It's, it's pretty simple after studying Prabhupada's books. So if you, if you learn the art of making notes properly for Bhagavatam, then making notes for the textbook becomes a cakewalk. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. I'm getting goosebumps. I had, actually, so from before, last... Yeah, before we go there... Actually, we should... I'm extremely sorry, extremely sorry for disturbing yeah. you. Because from last few days, my sadhana has broken. Yeah, we'll come to you, Prabhuji. Very, Just very, give me very, a minute. Yes, we'll yes. come to you. Just give me a minute. Extremely sorry, so, Prabhuji. So, Vishwam, yeah, Vishwam Modi, uh, Prabhu, was that um, uh, response okay for your question? Did that answer yes. your question? Yes, Prabhu. Yes, Prabhu. Yeah, so please try and do let us know in other sittings also what do you feel and let us know. Okay. We'll go back to Anand Goranga Prabhu. Prabhu, I'll let you moderate. Thank you. Uh, can we go to uh, Shreya? If you can unmute yourself, Shreya. Okay, thank you. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, Dandavat Pranam. Hare Krishna, Dandavat Pranam. Prabhuji, I just wanted to ask, like, what do you have to say about someone who is just performing bhakti or devotional service, uh, like reading of Srimad Bhagavatam or Bhagavad Gita, for the sake of getting rid of this material existence and not out of, like, love and even attraction for Krishna? Or is it doing it right? Or what do you have to say, Prabhuji? Akama sarva kamova moksha kama udaradhi tivrena bhakti yogena yajeta purusham param sanketyam pari hasyam vas thobam helena mevava vaikuntha nama grahanam asheshagaharam vidu. These two verses that I quoted first was from the second canto Srimad Bhagavatam, the third chapter, and the second one was from the sixth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, chapter two. 
both these verses that we quoted they mention that any connection with the supreme lord in the form of the deity in the form of the spiritual master in the form of the holy name in the form of shrimad bhagavatam any connection and in any mood in desire of material opulence or desire of material emancipation or liberation or desire for knowing or desire for service any contact with any intention but daily consistent intensity tivrena bhakti yogena if this is there then shrimad bhagavatam or deity worship or the holy name will take responsibility to purify us our duty is to somehow come in contact however we are if we are supposed to purify and then come then what is the glory of shrimad bhagavatam the child is not expected to bathe after coming out from the the mud and then go to the mother no the child with dirty muddy water playing around just goes to the mother and the mother gives the bath so shrimad bhagavatam is the mother so with all our dirt with all our contamination we go from wherever we are we start but we should stand under the shower we should put the soap and not just come out which means we should study consistently and stay there with patience the the shower water of shrimad bhagavatam's mercy will purify us is that okay Yes, thank, thank you so much, Dandavat Thank you, Dandavat Thank you so much, uh, Prabhu. It's getting sweeter and sweeter. Uh, we know it's getting later. We have about 10 hands uh, that are raised. Uh, it's up to you, Prabhu. If you think we can take those questions because it's a Labor Day holiday, but we know in India it's getting late, close to 10 p.m. But uh, I will leave it with you, Prabhu. Is it, is it okay sure. as we take the question? Okay. Yeah, we uh, should take and we will take it fast. Okay, beautiful. So I think uh, Mohit uh, Deshmukh, I think you wanted to ask a question. If you can kindly unmute yourself. Thank yes, you. yes, Prabhuji. I really apologize because of my from last day, few days, my sadhana has broken fully and uh, my seriousness and go, goes down means, uh, about bhakti. And from listening to your lecture, I'm fired up for my Muslims after listening Gaur Govind Maharaj pastimes and your Gurudev Radha Govind Maharaj and one question is there uh, hey um, ultimate aim of Gaudiya Gaudiya Vaishnava is Radha Dasyam so uh, why Prabhupada emphasizes uh, means more Krishna Krishna Dasyam in his books for the pleasure of Srimati Radha Rani Hari Bol. <laughs> and Prabhuji, actually my Vrata is from Janmashtami to Radhashtami. I will do extra five rounds. So I had completed my 16, but uh, remaining I had not read Sri Prabhupada books. So what can I do? I can I could complete five extra rounds or I can read Sri Prabhupada book, which if I have not if read. If you have time, you can do both. Keep five rounds going and then you can read also. And if you don't have time, then you can reduce the five rounds and read instead. Yes. Hare Krishna. And what is means what is the best thing that I can please Srila Prabhupada? Reading his what books. What is the best? <laughs> and I am extremely sorry. No problem. Beautiful. Th thank you so much for the question and wonderful answers, Prabhu. I think many devotees also have similar questions and uh, based on the questions that are being asked and your answers are already answering their questions. So Thank you so much, Prabhu. So we'll move along to Malati Krishna. Hello, Pranam Prabhuji. Uh, I have a question. Uh, how to please and get mercy of Radha Rani uh, to progress in bhakti? Uh, because I have heard uh, uh, like somewhere uh, Brahmaji used to uh, uh, meditate for 60,000 years and then only get a gl glimpse of her feet. Uh, so I'm just, I just need some clarity on this. Chanting the name of Krishna, worshipping Krishna, speaking about Krishna, Remembering Krishna, there's nothing which can please Radharani more than this. Okay. Uh, but there's some confusion, like uh, Brahmaji uh, being pure took some 60,000 years, but we fallen souls, how are we to uh, please her? So that kind of a confusion I'm getting. Brahmaji, <laughs> Brahmaji did not have a guru when he was doing this Vrat. And that too, he was trying to remember Radharani all by himself, uh, directly. So it doesn't work like that. If we come under a parampara, Brahmaji himself is the Adi Guru of the parampara, right? So he had to take shelter of a Guru also. His Guru is Vishnu. 
but to enter the lotus feet of to to approach the lotus feet of radharani you need an associate of radharani to be your guru right so vishnu yes. is not he is vaikuntapati mm. so there has to be an associate of shrimati radharani who has to give shelter to you and give a mantra and give a process and then you will get so brahma ji is showing that if you independently try and that to by meditating on radharani with exclusively without krishna then even if you take even if you're brahma all alone for 60000 years still you may not get your goal but on the other hand the gaudiya sampradaya acharyas are all made servants of radharani and the hari krishna mahamantra is coming down the sampradaya chanted by mahaprabhu the names of krishna for the pleasure, pleasure of shrimati radharani so yadyapi samadeshu vidhirapi pashyati rupa goswami has described na tava nakhagra marichim idam ichami nishamya tava chuta tadapi kripadbhuta vichim krishna deva bhavantam vande that krishna although the four kumaras they don't get a glimpse of your lotus feet but still by your waves of astonishing mercy i am desiring to get your your kripa so in guru parampara by taking shelter of krishna shrimati radharani is pleased okay thank you so much prabhu ji hari krishna thank you so much for the question as well mother uh, we'll move along to deepanshi hari krishna prabhu ji hari krishna please firstly bless us all that we also pay our heartly surrender to shrimad bhagavatam as per your points mentioned in today's class um, i have actually one concern and one question so can you please suggest should i ask my concern first or my question first whatever is your for, m- most uh, brimming point whichever is on the top list of your heart please put that first okay. i will ask my concern first uh, actually many times it happens that in your classes we attend we may we are sometimes part of your class sometimes it happens like you don't give us chance to ask questions so it end up so it end up like a pile of questions <laughs> from our side so sometimes we used to watch from youtube or facebook so in that case how to ask a question you can write an email um i'm putting it in the chat box you can you can see the email address but in some lecture i have listened that some devotee was asking you you not you do not reply on your mails so all the matajis can write to this email and the prabhuji can write to this email uh this is this has uh, both these email addresses have access by multiple devotees so whoever sees the email will answer okay thank you babuji now can, uh, now my question is uh, in ramayan time in, in during ramayan uh, there was rishis like vasishtha or vishwamitra and in shrimad bhagavatam in first canto it is mentioned when parikshit maharaj was uh, renounced everything and get near yamuna river then all the rishis were put, uh, but get together there their rishis name was also mentioned there were vishishta and vishwamitra names also so is it possible that those rishis are present still now even in this era as sure. rishis are in ramayan time also and is it possible that today even mm, they are yes. alive oh yes they have they have long life spans they have very long life spans so those who are there in the ramayan they are also there at the end of dwapar yuga not in kali yuga now the bhagavatam was spoken 5000 years ago and not on the banks of yamuna but on the banks of ganga um when shukdev goswami was speaking pari- to parikshit maharaj yes all these sages are constantly moving like narada muni they are moving constantly so wherever there is nectar the honey bees are found so they somehow find where the nectar is in the lotus flower so when the lotus flower of the lotus lips of shukdev goswami was emanating the nectar drops of shrimad bhagavatam all the honey bees came flying in on the banks of the ganga thank you prabhu ji thank you so much prabhu so can i just ask uh, one question that came through a private chat prabhu uh, so this is uh, with with regard to you know we know that everyday miracles are not less uh, extraordinary you know we see several extraordinary things are happening but we get used to it but uh, when devotees um, you know they are relative newcomers when they are reading shrimad bhagavatam there are uh, you know some sections of it that 
that makes us think, uh, you know, scientifically, is it possible, for example, somebody had X number of wives and whatnot? How do, how do we come across, uh, you know, how do we react? Is it, is it our faith? It's, it's of course possible uh, internally, but when we are preaching, we try to um, overlook those verses or those parts of Srimad Bhagavatam. Maharana Pratap had a horse, very famous. He was on top of his horse and Maharana Pratap's armor, chest armor, was 80 kilos. Think about it. 80 kilos weight, chest armor. His sword was 100 kilos. And with 100 kilos weight sword and 80 kilo weight armor, on back of a horse, he climbed up a mountain against gravity. So now if someone thousand years from now reads that, they will think, uh, how is it possible? Well, the point is it did happen. <laughs> so um, if, some, if the ant in the room is told that you are in the house of someone who is six feet tall, the ant will never believe because everyone has their, you know, Atmavat Manyate Jagat principle. They have their own vision, lens, that if it's not possible for me, it's not possible for anyone. Being an ant, if I can be six feet, there cannot be anything that is six feet. If being a man, I can't have 60,000 wives, it's not possible for anyone to have 60,000 wives. But the fact is, there were kings having 60,000 wives. So, we have to understand that they are not unscientific, um, it's just truth-based. There are so many facts in this world which are shocking. And uh, thousand years from now, people may even um, think that the presence of Jesus Christ or presence of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is fictitious. But the fact is they were actually historical personalities. So with time, it's, it's the nature of Kali Yuga that with time, somehow doubts creep into the heart with the numbers with uh, details. In the Chaitanya Bhagavat, it is described that when Mahaprabhu went on a riot against Chand Kazi with cloth flames in their hand, oil, oil lamps in their hand, Vrindavan Das Thakur mentions that there were so many people in that procession. He uses the number million. There were million people millions and millions of people in the procession, so much so that there's no more place on the land to walk. People had to jump into the Ganga and swim on broken uh, wood pieces across because there's no more place to stand and walk on the land. So people were going swimming through the Ganga uh, in that procession of Mahaprabhu against Chant Kazi. Now, if someone reads the numbers, they will think that this is, you know, just too much exaggeration. Because we are thinking from our perspective. If I do kirtan, million people won't come. So if Mahaprabhu does kirtan, how can million people come? <laughs> the fact is, it is actually true. So we also need to have the art of presenting it to the audience. We have to know whom we are speaking to. And we definitely don't agitate their faith to start with with these numbers. We give them sections of the Bhagavatam that they can relate to in the first place. And then once they get hooked on, the fish of their faith gets hooked on to the bait of the fishing rod of Srimad Bhagavatam. Then we slowly pull the fish out of the comfort zone of the water. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Prabhu. Uh, Prabhu, are we okay if, to go a few more minutes, Prabhu? Maybe maximum 10 more minutes if it's okay with you. I just want sure. to get you. We'll do it faster. We'll take okay, it faster. Prabhu. If the questions can be eloquent and crisp and concise, we can do one, one line answers. <laughs> Wonderful. So we have our uh, last six hands that are uh, raised. So we'll go with Abhishek Kumar Yadav. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, Dandavat Pranam. Uh, Prabhuji, I need to share something. I don't have any question if I'm allowed to share that. Is it uh, in line with Bhagavatam and you think everyone in the assembly here will make spiritual advancement and inspiration by hearing that? If yes, then yes, otherwise no. It's about you Prabhu, if I'm no. allowed. No, we'll take the next question. <laughs> okay, thank you Abhishek Prabhu, maybe we can get that next time. Uh, Niru? Can you unmute yourself Niru? Yeah, thank you. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Dhanavad Pranam. 
धन्यवाद प्रणाम आई ट्राई टू चैंट बट आई साइमल्टेनियसली आई फील दैट आई एम नो फेथ इन द प्रोसेस ऑफ चैंटिंग आई फील वेरी गिल्टी अबाउट इट हाउ कैन आई अटेन फेथ इन चैंटिंग एंड कृष्णाज मर्सी हरे यू शुड यू शुड रीड अ बुक कॉल्ड एज श्री नामामृत इट्स अ कंपाइलेशन ऑफ कोटेशंस बाय श्रीला प्रभुपाद एंड कंटिन्यू टू चैंट द माइंड विल गिव अस सो मेनी रीजंस the mind will try to distract us the mind will never say while browsing on facebook or on whatsapp that you know you don't have enough faith on whatsapp why are you wasting time oh facebook you are not surrendered enough the mind will never say like that because the mind is successful that we are away distracted but only when we are reading bhagavatam or chanting the holy name will there will be sleep or worshiping the deity the mind will say other things don't worry Shri Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Prabhupad in one of his Upadeshavali messages he has mentioned that if the mind troubles us during chanting ignore the mind and don't worry about it just continue to chant but at the same time to nourish our faith we read books like that Shri Namamrita is a good book so please continue to chant uh, and continue to read and tell the mind that you you keep chattering but we have better things to do we will not pay attention it's almost like a child if we are driving a car and the child in the passenger seat will tell us that mama 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 look at this look at this we will not look because we have to if we look then we were going to dash ahead so we will just keep listening yes 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 correct 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 and we continue driving <laughs> so that is what we have to do with the mind the mind is a restless child who keeps throwing tantrums and the best thing is to ignore and continue on our journey Thank you very much, Prabhu Ji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. We'll move along to Ambika. Hare Krishna, Prabhu Ji. Dhanda Bhat Pranam. Prabhu Ji, I want to make notes on Bhagavad Gita, verse by verse, but I get confused that how to start it and what should point be included and to make it more efficient. So, can you, Prabhu Ji, please give and guide us tips and how to make it prepare efficient, more efficient Bhagavad Gita notes? so you can study prabhupad's book you can study a book called as surrender unto me by bhuri jan prabhu you can hear classes of his grace radhesham prabhu on youtube he is doing a bhagavat a geeta amrita bindu series you can hear that also uh, chaitanya charan prabhu's series on the bhakti shastri are wonderful so you can hear all of these and read and then you can compile your notes प्रभु जी आई जस्ट कंफ्यूज दैट मतलब इसको किस तरह से एक मतलब नोट्स को कैसे लिखा जाए मतलब कॉपी में मतलब प्रभुपाद जी की कमेंट्री को मतलब किस तरह से कंपाइल करें आप श्लोक लिखिए और अगर आपको लगे कि ये बहुत महत्वपूर्ण श्लोक है तो श्लोक लिखिए और नंबर डाल दीजिए कि इसको मेमोराइज करना है या आप कोई अनुवाद पढ़ेंगे या तात्पर्य पढ़ेंगे तो सिर्फ एक दो पॉइंट जो आपको लगता है यहाँ बहुत महत्वपूर्ण है इसको अगर जीवन में उतारा जाए तो जीवन बदल जाएगा उसको लिख लीजिए और मनन चिंतन कीजिए उसको क्या कैसे ग्रहण करो सार ग्रहण करने का प्रयास कीजिए ठीक एंड जस्ट आई थिंक आई गॉट रिमाइंडेड आई थिंक आई रोट द ई मेल एड्रेस रॉन्ग सो आई राइट द ई मेल एड्रेस करेक्ट हियर um yeah this is for the matajis i forgot to add the dasi there in the previous one so please forgive me for that but uh, the amarendra das dot rgs is the right one so thank you. thank you thank you so much but we are in the home stretch and uh, this is one of those classes that we don't want to end <laughs> uh, and everybody's become diabetic today because the class has been so sweet and the questions are uh, sweet and your answers are sweet as well uh, so we have four more hands that are raised uh, so we'll quickly go through those questions prabhu with your kind permission hari sure. smriti and i also want to just uh, put a uh, point that if if um, if i do um let's say discourage or not encourage someone um say things about me or things not connected it's because we want to save everybody's time uh people joining in it's about 10 10 at night in india so we don't want to waste anybody's time 
and speaking about me in a public forum or even in a private forum doesn't benefit anybody including the person including me and the listeners so please nobody take offense if there are questions related to shastra by which you me and everyone around we will mind will be at the lotus feet of krishna it's always encouraged we can stretch time but if it is something that takes our mind away from krishna uh, even for half a second we are not interested we want to be very sharp and focus on that so i hope everyone will uh, understand that mood thank you prabhu hari smriti hari krishna prabhu ji dhanyavad pranam uh, thank you so much prabhu ji for a very enlightening lecture it really helped all of us prabhu ji my question is that for someone who's just starting to read the shrimad bhagavatam or study the shrimad bhagavatam what should be the approach should we just stick to the uh, purports given by uh, prabhupad or should we also aspire to uh, study the other previous acharyas commentaries and tikas uh, because when i personally study the tikas and commentaries it takes up a lot of time and then it it becomes the process becomes very slow um, so what should be the approach at the stage of initial study yeah my uh, since again different devotees will have different perspectives on this but my personal take on this is first reading just go through all the translations of the 12 cantos of shrimad bhagavatam at least get an overall picture of what is happening first reading read all the translation just the translation and in your next reading read translation purport translation purport translation purport translation purport and third reading if you like the translation or the purport then go to that sanskrit words and mark or you could do that even in your second reading but in the first reading just go through the translations get to know the overall picture of what is being painted in 12 cantos and after doing all that uh, you can read vishwanath chakravarti thakur saratha darshini tika no problem very very tasty uh, very uh, relishable no problem but uh this w- is a sustainable model i feel instead of taking everything on the head in one go and not knowing what to do take one bit at a time at least gain the confidence that somehow just translation but i could finish through the whole shrimad bhagavatam yes prabhuji thank you so much prabhuji thank you uh, richa hari krishna hare krishna <laughs> my question is that i think it's getting uh, muted if you can unmute yourself it looks like it's a small kid can the mother of richa or anyone uh, unmute hello uh, hari krishna hari krishna seems like you're on mute again <laughs> yeah one more attempt uh, go ahead hari krishna hari krishna my question is that how to have unflinching faith in krishna in every situation we will have unflinching faith in krishna in every situation only by performing bhakti अविस्मृति कृष्ण पदार विंदयो क्षिणोति अभद्राणि च शमतनोति सत्वस्य शुद्धिं परमात्म भक्तिं ज्ञानं च विज्ञान विरागयुक्तं द 12th कॅन्टो 12th चॅप्टर श्रीमद् भागवतम डिस्क्राइब्स दैट ओनली बाय परफॉर्मिंग भक्ति विल सेवन बेनिफिट्स कम इन आवर लाइफ व्हाट आर दे क्षिणोति अभद्राणि इनॉस्पिशियसनेस विल गो अवे एंड शमतनोति आवर फेथ इन द सुप्रीम लॉर्ड विल इंक्रीज third satvasya shuddhim consciousness will be cleansed fourth paramatma bhaktim love will rise in the heart fifth nyanam all transcendental knowledge will be revealed sixth viraga yuktam nyanam cha nyanam vidnyana cha viraga yuktam vidnyanam realization and seventh renunciation so these seven benefits will come just by performing bhakti but bhakti must be performed with enthusiasm confidence and patience then automatically it will come not overnight but slowly but surely thank you i think uh, rich rich as are you okay with the answer thank you very much hari krishna thank you so much hari krishna very nice question and a wonderful answer prof so two more uh, hands uh, vridhi hari krishna prabhu ji 
Hare Krishna. So I was actually hoping to hear from you that first we must go through all the Bhagavatam by reading the translation. So I actually finished reading the whole Bhagavatam by reading the translations first. So I noticed that there are certain pastimes which, if read or if told to somebody, can give the person liberation or he will not take birth. So I actually have a habit of telling my friends about some pastimes. Also, my question is, if the person actually wants to develop love for Radha Krishna, pure love for Radha Krishna, but uh, he wants to take birth again, so that till that in the next shanam, he can get that love of Radha Krishna. So in such a case, what will happen? Like, will he get mukti or will he be qualified enough to like, or should we, so my question is, should we avoid such pastimes to be told to our friends or something like that? Or what will happen in such a case? You will never go wrong with the right thing. <laughs> you will never go wrong with the right thing. If any pastime is giving liberation, and if you feel like sharing that with your friends, definitely you should. Definitely. It will take us closer to the path of attaining love of God for Radha Krishna. So once we develop love for Radha Krishna, then we become like dancing puppets in their hand. If you want me to come here again, I will come here. If you want me to stay with you in the spiritual world, I will stay there. If you want me to go to hell, no problem. I will go there also. It has been described by our Acharyas that you can send me wherever you want, my Lord. I am not going to ask any, I am not going to give any justification or reasoning. Shauni patitva mathava eka makinchanatvam nityam dadasi bahumana mathapamanam vaikuntha vasa mathava narake nivasam ha vasudeva mamanasti gatistva danya. My Lord, you can send me to hell or you can keep me in Vaikuntha. You can make me poverty stricken. You can make me rich. You can give me the praise of the whole creation or you can publicly criticize me. My Lord, you have these two options, but I have only one loving option to go with whatever you decide for me. So when love rises, then the person doesn't think of liberation. Wherever Krishna relocates me, I have no problem because my duty is to be connected to the company of Goloka Brindavan. And the company is free to relocate me wherever they want. So continue with both these principles. Continue to read and share the pastimes which you think are uh, liberating for the self and others. And uh, don't worry about the confusion. When love develops, <laughs> everything. Divya gyan ride prakashita preme bhakti jaha huite avidhya vinasha jate vede gaye jaha racharita. When love rises in the heart for Krishna, true love automatically liberation like a maid servant walks behind the person with folded hands please accept me and the person says no i am at the feet of bhakti devi not mukti devi <laughs> okay so we'll move along to the last uh, uh, question prabhu uh, if it is okay uh, this is from uh, sanjana padma Hi Krishna Prabhuji, Dandavat Pram. Prabhuji, my <laughs> Prabhuji, my question is that while chanting, my mind wanders off very much. I'm not able to control it. So, is there a better way to control our mind while chanting, and what to think about mainly, which will keep our mind completely focused on chanting? It's 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 very nice to sit in front of the deity and chant. Mm -hmm. His Holiness Radhanath Maharaj recently in a class he said. <laughs> something very beautiful. Maharaj said that if we have deities in front of us and we have bead bag in our hand and we have the opportunity to chant and blissfully glance at the deities all day, we don't need anything else in this world. We have our deities, we have our beads and we are sitting and glancing at them and chanting. We don't need anything else. So that's a very good thing to do, to chant in front of the deities or to, keep, in, to keep a picture in front favorite picture, whichever picture, and constantly chant for their pleasure. Tell Radha and Krishna, tell Mahaprabhu that I am chanting now only for you. You please attentively hear, I'm calling out your names, and then call out to them. Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Prabhu. Thank you so much, Prabhu. So it was a nearly a two-hour uh, session, a tsunami of spiritual guidance that we got uh, through you. And uh, we're also grateful to, uh, you know, 100 devotees who have joined because the maximum number of devotees we can have through this Zoom call is 100. And I know I got so many messages that devotees could not join. So we apologize uh, to those devotees. And again, 
um, you know, we are grateful to all the devotees who have joined us from um, different parts of the world, especially from India, from USA, from Canada, especially during this Labor Day weekend in North America. So, and again, thank you. We, uh, thank you to you, Prabhu, for giving us your valuable time and, uh, you know, wonderful, wonderful instructions to all of us to actually harvest uh, so much of information that you've given us today. So we are grateful on behalf of all the devotees who have joined us today, Prabhu. Thank, thank you, Prabhuji. Thank you so much for for having me on this call. On behalf of Iskon Scar, bro, thank you for inviting me. And please pray that all the scars in my heart because of material <coughs> contamination will be borrowed by the Supreme Lord and taken from my heart. And may there be some upliftment in the consciousness. As I wrap up, I want to offer my obeisances to all the wonderful Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis who participated today. Thank you so much, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai.